the Sharon and Guy Fill In Podcast. Sharon and Guy. Good morning. Welcome along to the show. You're with Sharon and Guy filling in for JJ, Mike and Dom. And if you were watching the vote on TV3 last night, you would have been asking the same question as I. And not just about some of the things that Guy said, but why do you still have a moustache? <laughs> I kind of think it makes me look mature and intelligent. It doesn't. It makes you look creepy. It makes me look like I'm a scholarly man with leather-bound books. It, no, no, it doesn't at all. It doesn't. Chang, do you think it does? No, he looks more like a pedo. <laughs> Oh, Thank God. you for that contribution, Chang. I appreciate it. I'm going to ignore it because I'm more mature than you. But you did it for November. It's the 5th of December. <laughs> you need to really let this thing go. That oh, was a good rap. We're going to have to talk about this later on in the show, I think. Uh, but we've... It's looking good, guys. I'm really happy with it. How are you feeling this morning? You were up pretty late last night. <laughs> I feel terrible, but I look good, and that's all that matters. Yep, you sure do. We've got Daily 3 coming up in just a couple of minutes' time. The three biggest stories, and we need your participation at the end. So if you want to win a prize, stick around to find out why. Sharon and Guy. Filling in. JJ, Mike and Dom's Daily 3. I'm glad we started with Lord because she is the one of the big stories today. Number 3. In at number 3, Lord has been snapped by a paparazzo... At the beach with her boyfriend. Fine, right? No problem. No, TMZ have found the photo. That's the online website that spreads gossip. And uh, made a terrible video in response. How young can you bank down there? It ranges from 15 like, to 18 in New Zealand. <laughs> what, in different counties? No, it depends how hot the woman is. It's a sliding scale. Right. If she has a $2.5 million deal, though, 17's Sex is 18, everything else is negotiable. Negotiable? (laughs) So basically, Lord is what, 17 now? She's 17 years old. Her boyfriend's 25, and they are questioning uh, the age of consent, making jokes about New Zealand, which is quite weird, which was saying that uh, we've got a sliding scale down here. It's just, I I just don't think it's anybody's business of you to discuss anybody's sex life, but... It is so weird to me that they would discuss yeah. a 17-year-old sex life. Especially because of these old, fat nerd guys on computers that creep the hell out of me. Exactly. But also, like, I've never been I've never been like the hugest Lord fan or a big advocate for her, but as soon as they started taking shots, I was like, you better not rip into Lord. I felt angry. I want to get revenge. We've got to do it somehow. We definitely have to get revenge. And the tweets that people were writing about them yesterday were pretty funny. So just for the note, the age of consent in New Zealand is 16. Yes. And in America, it's 16 to 18. So they're actually getting our laws confused with their own. Anyway, dork bags. All right. <laughs> number two. <laughs> and at number two, Colin Craig, he's a political guy. I don't even know why I'm giving breathing space, but yesterday he's on the radio. He's trying to run for parliament and he's unsure about the moon landing. Do you think oh, that man walked on the moon? Oh, look, I, I have no idea, mate. That, that's what we're told. <laughs> Colin, did you hear me? I asked you if you believed man walked on the moon. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe it or not believe it. Wow. <laughs> He's so stupid that both of his names are first names because he can't remember <laughs> a last name. No, Colin Craig, he, he, he went on the radio and he was being already questioned about something else, which he could be a conspiracy theory. They questioned about September 11 and all that. And uh, when it came to this story, he didn't believe... He, he w- did want to rule out that we hadn't landed on the moon. The wow. People. He sounds like the sort of guy we need to be making our country better. He's a very simple guy, but here's my problem. My problem is that I'm covering him right now. Media in New Zealand are going to talk about him all the time, giving him more and more exposure. His stupidity is going to help his campaign. My theory is he's like a. My theory is that he's like a um, fairy. We should ignore him and he'll go away. We should hope so, anyway. And at number one, number one. I almost did it without saying any of the numbers, and then I <laughs> stuffed it up at the very end. You rookie. And at number one, some research has come through to say coffee or exercise. Which is a better way to start the day? Recent studies have shown that exercise, 30 seconds of intense exercise, could be a lot more valuable to your brain's functions than a cup of coffee. Wow. That's quite amazing. We should try that right now, though, actually, because you have you were late this morning. <laughs> so maybe you could just get on the ground and do 30 seconds of free subs and we'll just see if it makes you feel any better than right now. Do I have to do it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you can do ladies' free subs if you want. I don't even know if I can do free subs for 30 seconds. We'll soon find out. We All right, will let's find go. out. I think it's doing about 10 press-ups. Okay, he's on the floor. Oh, he's doing One, men's, men's two, press-ups. Three, four, five, six, 
Seven. If you reckon eight, that this is true, nine, call us on 0800 The Edge. We want to know this morning, what do you do to get out of bed in the morning? What wakes you up on an early morning? 0800 The Edge right now, or you can text us through to 3343. Sharon and Guy. Filling in for JJ, Mike and Dom. JJ, Mike and Dom's Daily 3. So in the Daily 3, we're talking about research that shows that 30 seconds of intense exercise is better to wake you up than a morning cup of coffee. We want to talk about your life hacks. Yep, we want to know what gets you out of bed in the morning and wakes you up. Good morning, Heath. What gets, gets you out of bed in the morning? I go cycling. Do- oh, good effort. Woo! Get my spandex on and uh, <laughs> go for a ride out to Brighton, which Two. is uh, really good. Oh, beautiful. Out and down in Christchurch. Yep. Christchurch, yeah. Oh, good effort. And uh, it's also beautiful scenery and a great way to start the day. It is fantastic, mate. It's uh, it's really good. Hey, um, really nice thanks. Out by the beach and... Hey, thanks so much for your call, bro. Appreciate it. That's a vote for exercise there. No worries. Good morning, Brian. What do you swear by to wake you up in the morning? Brian. Brian. Bassa. Brian, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, cool. Are you, able- here, yeah. are you able to take us off speakerphone, Brian? Then you'll be able to hear us. Uh, here, uh... <laughs> no, no speaker. Pardon? <laughs> it's just really quiet. You, are you on speakerphone or hands-free? No. Oh, okay. Well, just <laughs> just just stand still and make sure your radio's turned down, okay? Cool. Brian, what gets you out of bed in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> Brian's fallen asleep. Thanks, Brian. I think Brian's <laughs> still in bed. Good morning, Chris. What gets you out of bed in the morning? A good no- nookie first thing in the morning. <laughs> nookie? How often are you actually getting nookie in the morning? Well, it depends if the partner's home and, and not already at work or still at work. But, I mean, most guys are generally up for it in the morning. You know wow. <laughs> good on you for spicing things up on a morning basis. Yeah, of course. Good exercise. You get the happiness and then you're awake ready to start the day. <laughs> Do you know what? You're not the only person that has texted us in and it's way more common than I thought it would be. It's the most oh, popular sure. one. <laughs> well, you won't need a coffee in the morning. Did you do it this morning? Uh, no, because uh, unfortunately it's still at work. So, yeah. Well, you but def- hopefully tomorrow morning, maybe. Well, you've definitely done something because you sound really awake. Thank you so much <laughs> for your call this morning. Thank you. See you later. We've got some texts that have come through to, of things that help wake you up in the morning as well. A green uh, smoothie was a popular one. Sex is overwhelming, the fa- the favourite. Uh, life hack, just take a dump in the shower when you're waking Whoa! up. <laughs> that was Someone's actually quoting a tweet that I did a long time ago. That was a joke. That's not... No one actually do that, okay? That's it does a- save a lot of time, though. It's so messy. I... P- <laughs> I put food into a small bowl, so it makes me think I'm eating a full full bowl of food, but it's actually not that much food. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's what? kind of a good life hack. Is it the kind of like you put the food out, and so then you wake up and you're like, oh, I've got my food there already, and then you can just get up. You follow the smell like a dog. <laughs> I set my phone's clock anything from 20 to 42 minutes ahead and trick myself into thinking it's late. Yeah, that, that is a good one. Well, so what, you stress yourself out of the morning? That's a terrible one. No, because you think that you're sleeping in. It's like it's the weekend. Oh, yeah, of course. I guess that works quite well. It is a great idea. Well, thank you so much to all of your texts and all of your calls this morning. And if you are one of those people like I, I, I definitely am, that struggle to get out of bed in the morning, maybe one of those things will help you. Okay, Sharon and Guy. Filling in. I've got all the boys on the show in the studio right now. We've got Carl, our producer. Hi. We've got Chang. Hello. And we've got Mr. <laughs> Gar Williams. Great to be here. I have found out this stat about men, and it's a talent that only men have if their hands are tied behind their backs. This so is already weird. I have got <laughs> some duct tape. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> all right. And I'm going to get the beautiful Sophie, one of our other producers, to uh, tape everyone's hands together. So, Guy, okay. we're going we're gonna to start with your hands. Thank you very much. Okay. It's getting okay. a bit kinky. <laughs> so your hands are taped together now, Guy? Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Why am I the only one with my hands taped? <laughs> why are Chang's hands not... Why has Chang got that weird look on his face? <laughs> no, that's always there, Guy. It's just, he's just got a weird face. <laughs> We've decided this morning we need to have an intervention with you. Oh, uh, no. Yes. And well, we, I don't even know what this is about. We have put your hands together because you may try and find us on this because it is something that you've become very attached to. Is this the cocaine addiction? <laughs> 
that. I should not have mentioned the cocaine addiction. <laughs> no, we saw you on TV 3s The Vote last night, yes. and you were okay, I guess. But <laughs> we need to do something about this moustache because Movember oh, is. Oh, no. Movember is over. It I is, love it. Like, you need to get rid of this moustache. It's not helping your single status. You look a bit creepy. You're losing your lip. Your bosses at John and Ben at 10 don't want you to have it anymore either. So we are going this morning. You're not, no. You're, yeah, we no. are. We're going to shave off the mo. Are you ready? No, of course I'm not ready. Well, we're actually going to let Chang do this as well, so um, <laughs> you'll so need to sit down because he can't reach you. You're so tall. <laughs> it's so weird shaving another guy's mo, though, because I normally shave my own. Well, <laughs> don't is, act like you can grow facial is, hair, it, Chang. <laughs> this is against my rights in the Geneva Convention. This is not absolutely not fair. Okay, well, we're just going to do it anyway. Oh, Please don't. We, we got an email from your bosses, so get in there, Is Chang. Is that razor hygienic? No problem. We got it from Chang's dad's bathroom. Chang. So. <laughs> Start, Chang. Come on. on. Chang, Chang. Let's talk about this, oh, mate. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, it was so. And it took me so long to grow. <laughs> and it is quite long. We probably should have. Uh, we probably should have trimmed it first. It, yeah, we should have. Why, why are you doing this? Ah, uh-huh. okay. Stop there. Stop there. Just save it as a, like a half Hitler. <laughs> No, no, no. 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 Okay, I've got to go the whole way. I've got to go the whole way. Oh, I love this mister. This is genuine. Oh, this is tragic. Oh, You're going to look so much better when you've got it done, I though. I look like Ed Flander. All the ladies loved it. The ladies didn't love it. We watched you trying to, you know, spade some ladies at the Music Awards. It was not happening because of your moustache. It's getting in my mouth. It's so gross. It's your own oh, hair. Oh, God. I don't want to eat my own hair. <laughs> you already look better. You oh. already look better. We're going to continue to uh, shave off Guy's moustache, and we'll be back with you straight after this. So, it's the Sharon and Guy fill-in podcast. We've been doing an intervention this morning with Guy because we saw him on TV3's The Vote last night. He's been doing Movember. This but is so sad. I put a month into that. You did really well for a month, At babe. least you could not get a not uh, you could get a, a, a sharp razor for God's sake. This is painful. Well, we thought about this last minute, and the only one we could find was Chang's dad. So hopefully he doesn't need to shave this morning. <laughs> if I'm bleeding, this is going to be very. What part of your body does your dad shave with that razor, Chang? It looks like a place with long hair. <laughs> you don't need to know. You don't need to know. <laughs> now, now untie me at least. No, well, well, well I kind of like you are tied up. It's shaved. Well done. Congratulations, guys. It's gone. Ah, you look so ah, much better already. Ah, 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 that's even worse as ripping off the cat. Ah, ah. No one said that we were going to be shaving your wrists as well, but <laughs> we didn't know they were that hairy. But congratulations. You now look like a good-looking man again. Hey, hey. the end of an era. I feel so ugly and naked and afraid and alone. Now you can wear a trench coat without getting some sly looks. <laughs> <laughs> if you okay, Sharon and Guy filling in. All right. Sharon, this is time for an intervention, mate. It's that time of year. It's the spirit of Christmas time. Everyone's getting into it. Chang's kissing under the mistletoe. I'm wearing a cute little elf hat looking adorable. <laughs> You're not getting into the spirit. You're a bit down on Christmas. What's your buzz, babe? Oh, I just... I can't, why are we talking about this? Because you're just bringing my vibe down. I love Christmas. I love the music. And you're coming in here saying you don't like Christmas carols and you're staying away from the malls because oh. you don't like the songs. It's classic. Oh, yeah. No, I did all my Christmas shopping online this year. And oh. I did all of my husband's for him online too because I hate going to the mall and hearing Christmas songs. It's the same Christmas songs, the same Christmas CDs. Mariah Carey's Christmas CD. Beautiful. Classic. Yeah, but we've heard it a million Jessica times. Jessica Simpson's cl- Christmas album. Not so classic, but still enjoy it. <laughs> Boney M, classic. I just, oh, I just don't enjoy Christmas. I like, um, like when they have like a choir of young boys, and that sounded weird. But I mean, like you know, when they sing in high voices and Christmas oh. carols, like it's on ho- yeah, that sort of thing. I, I think that's really cool. I've just really not got into. It, well, that's just one of the reasons. Then I used to work in a music store, and I'd have to listen to the best Christmas album ever from eight a.m. to six p.m. every day, <laughs> which just killed me. That's and probably a fair point. I never get to have Christmas with my husband because our families are in two different places so we've been together this will be our fifth Christmas and we still have never had a Christmas together I think he's trying to tell you something you're a Grinch during Christmas mate you've got to have a better attitude this is why also the trump card I was born on Christmas Eve (laughs) so every year I just want to celebrate my birthday and Christmas and Jesus steal my thunder (laughs) you have no idea what it is like to be like oh yeah it's my birthday come for dinner (laughs) oh no sorry we've got to go to church on Christmas Eve are you kidding me? You went to church last year. You went to church on Sunday. 
Every it's, fa- just, it's, it's hard work. Every family, every whanau, every community has one. We want to know from you, who is the Grinch Whoa. in your family? I am not a Grinch. In our family, it's Sharon. She's just being totally unreasonable about this. It's the best time of year. Sharon, get a bit of mistletoe in your bonnet. That's not an expression. I just, I just want to, another reason is that I, for my, because my birthday's on Christmas Eve, I went to... Oh, my family, outside of my immediate family, they forget to come and see me on my birthday. They're like, oh, we'll see her at Christmas. Too late for excuses, mate. Too late for excuses. Please call in no, 800 The Edge. You don't understand. Who is the Grinch in your family? Let's name him, shame him. Sharon, first on the list. Or you can stand up for me for texting to 3343 or call at 0800 The Edge. Let's do this. Sharon and Guy. Filling in. Apparently, I'm a Grinch. Which is so not fair, because well, I, I am t- not a Grinch. I'll tell you what, Twitter, the world of Twitter and texting is definitely agreeing with you. Thank you. Everyone is saying that you've got the short end of the stick. I do, you, it's terrible. The only person that has less luck than me with their birthdays is the people that have their birthday on Christmas Day. And some people are, some people have texted and someone actually texted, my birthday is Christmas Day. And so, Jesus, we appreciate you writing in, mate. It's always nice to have a, have a text from you. <laughs> no, you get enough attention already. <laughs> Back off my day. Um, but we wanted to hear about the Grinches in your family this morning. And Paula, yours is your son. Yeah, um, his birthday is Boxing Day. Yeah. Oh. Um, so he can't have a party or anything on his birthday because all of his friends are with, his, are with their families. So oh. he knows exactly where you're coming from. So yep. can you just have the have the change the birthday to a different day, like the actual party? <laughs> we have an early birthday party for him, but when you're only nine years old, it's a bit... Unhappy. Oh, birthday, really. Well, we well maybe you should just have a massive birthday, but like weeks after, just clear, get way away from Jesus. He's just still in the thunder. No, but it's still unfair though, because you want to celebrate your birthday on your birthday. Yeah, we tried a thing for a couple of years, uh, Paula, which maybe you guys could try. Was we we celebrated the half birthday, so we moved my birthday to the twenty fourth oh. of June instead. But then yeah. my mum realised that only half of our family remembered, so I ended up getting two days of presents, <laughs> which was a pretty good time. But the I, only other problem with my son is um, he was born the bo- uh, day of the Boxing Day tsunami. So oh, it's kind oh, wow. of a morbid day for him as, as well. Oh, no. Well, make a big deal for him this year, and then maybe he'll stop being a Grinch when it comes to Christmas. Absolutely. Thank oh. you so much for calling this morning, Paula. I was born on the ninety-seven, the same day as like the the nineteen eighty-seven stock market crash. So I feel your pain. My dad's like, it was all your fault. What? <laughs> hey. Um, oh my god. Uh, we're getting some other um, other good texts in. My mum is our Grinch. No Xmas tree or decorations or anything. Yeah, we don't have a Christmas tree at our house either. I think that's kind of a little bit sad. No, Give it a try. It's n- no. It's like, what? Why? If you're not going to have your, ha- your Christmas at your house, then why do you need a Christmas tree? Just because it's just the spirit of Christmas. I don't know. You guys need a bit of an adjustment check. I feel. Although my auntie Jan last year, she got me this little Santa, and that's the only Christmassy thing I do is I put this little Santa on our bookshelf. You don't. You've rolled your eyes while you're saying it. That sounds so cute. Just remember. guys. Guys, it is cute. you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to go all out. Just feel the spirit of goodwill and humanity around the world. I'm trying to sound real deep and meaningful, but I just sound like a loser. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Although, well, I, I see what you're saying, and it is great to see my family on Christmas Day, but sometimes I just wish people would ask me how my birthday was the day before. But we've actually, I, I feel bad <laughs> I, I feel bad now because uh, people are saying you're not a Grinch, Sharon, so I apologise for calling you a Grinch. Thank you, guys. You're still a Grinch, though, so sucker. Oh, I don't, I don't even go to any Christmas parties. <laughs> if we had our each Christmas party last week, I stayed for an hour and a half. I was wondering where you were. Yeah, I was like, I'm out. I'm over it. <laughs> if I hear jingle bells all the time, I'm going to uppercut myself. <laughs> Sharon and Guy. Filling in for JJ, Mike and Dom. Guy has this idea. He's I'm been so harping, excited, you guys. He's been harping on about this all week. A new segment to sweep the country by storm. <laughs> I call it Nelson News. Why is it Nelson? Hold your applause. <laughs> Why is it called Nelson News though? I've I've decided to call it Nelson Nelson News. Basically, I want to do a small town news segment. And Nelson, which is where I'm from, is quite a special place. It's a place where weird things happen all the time. I'll give you an example. This is a recent story from Nelson. Chang, play the intro, mate. In breaking news, Nelson just got carpet and its first wireless radio. So now the whole town can gather around and listen to Guy Williams as he presents the Nelson News. In Nelson News today, a Tahuna Nui woman, a Tahuna Nui is a place in Nelson. 
obviously, where I uh, where I where I used to work at McDonald's. Anyway, shout out to Hatuna Nui McDonald's. <laughs> a Tahuna Nui woman smashed a bowl of hot potatoes over her boyfriend's head, pursued him. And tr- when he tried to avoid the confrontation and then twice kicked pies out of his hands. Everyone needed to know that, right? How good was that story? So that was it. That was that was the first story from Nelson. I got more stories from Nelson. There's heaps of more stories from Nelson. So all the stories are from Nelson or are they from other small she towns? Twi- they can be from any small... Nelson News is an all-encompassing term used to describe stories that happen anywhere in New Zealand, your hometown, which is probably very similar to Nelson and has a lot of weird stuff going on. I love that she kicked two pies out of his hands. Two. Oh my. Like he got a pie to calm down. She kicked it with her ha- foot out like he's a karate ninja pie expert out of his hand. He went and go, oh, all right, let's calm down. I'll get another pie. She kicked the other one out as well. It's so awesome. So you've got a whole segment of Nelson this News. Is a new, this, is a breaking, this is a breaking segment. We, it's we be need huge. to take a vote on this, I think. <laughs> and Ralph has already called up. Uh, Ralph, are you for or against Nelson News? I'm for it. Yes! Ralph! Ralph, okay. Ralph you're excited? Are you from Nelson, mate? <laughs> no, I'm not. Awesome! Someone <laughs> not even... Nelson's from South Africa. Oh, oh, fantastic. We don't have... It. Will there be anything from South Africa in Nelson News? Oh, stories about Nelson Mandela. Do, uh, strange but true. <laughs> Nelson is actually named after Nelson Mandela, so shout out to South Africa. <laughs> Thank you for your call, Ralph. Hannah, what are your thoughts, for or against? Definitely for. Yes! What Definitely do you for. What do you even oh. like about it, Hannah? Well, one, it's in the centre of our country, so we should care about it. And two, <laughs> for people that aren't involved with Nelson or have never been to Nelson and just think it's a piss take, it's hilariously funny. So <laughs> it's just a crowd pleaser. Okay, Hannah. Remember I'll, your I'll news. It doesn't have to be from Nelson necessarily. I'm just saying Nelson is a good example of a place <laughs> that's got some issues. Well, so far we have got two phone calls saying that they are for Nelson News. Call us on 0800 The Edge if you would like to vote as well. Um, on the text machine, for it, it's an awesome idea and I'm an Auckland Auckland. Yeah. Don't tell the people from Nelson that. They don't like North Aucklanders. <laughs> we love them. Uh, someone else says, I am against it. It's lame. Lol. <laughs> That's a yes for Nelson News from me. Go for it, guy. Guy, you're awesome. You've got to do Nelson News. And then someone else said, don't use Nelson News. Sorry, guy. It sucks. S- sounds like Sharon <laughs> and that angry person on Twitter are <laughs> not getting their way. Nelson News <laughs> is coming up after this. Oh, God. If you, oh, I can't even do anything. It's gonna to be stop good. You're gonna happening. enjoy it. You're this gonna is love Demi it. Demi Lovato. It's Neon Lights. Nelson News next on the Edge. <laughs> Sharon and Guy filling in for JJ, Mike, and Dom. We are about to embark on a journey with Mr. Guy Williams on a thing he likes to call Nelson News. Be still, my heart, because it's freaking out. It's freaking out right now. This is so exciting. <laughs> oh my god! Before we uh, actually do this, though, Diana, are you sure that we should do Nelson News? Oh uh, yes, I'm very sure. I think anything that's an idea of guys is a great idea. I don't know if that is entirely true, Diana. Well, maybe not entirely, but mostly. Okay. Well, if this goes wrong, Diana, it's all your fault. Thanks, okay? Diana. Okay. And hey, I just, I just want to say that I think Dom needs to worry because Guy's doing a great job, and uh, uh, you know, we just look forward to listening to him every morning. Oh, thank you so much. That is so nice, Diana. <laughs> thank so you so much you. For, for pumping it up before he destroys it with his segment. <laughs> Thanks for your call. And are you ready to We do have this? stalled long enough. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Nelson News. In breaking news, Nelson just got carpet and its first wireless radio. So now the whole town can gather around and listen to Guy Williams as he presents the Nelson News. <clears throat> In Nelson News this hour, this is a direct headline from the Nelson Mail, Nelson's finest newspaper. A man who wowed Nelson Arts Festival audiences with a wristwatch made out of his own penis (laughs) returns to the Theatre Royal with a new show for kids. Ladies and gentlemen, get involved for this kids show in Nelson. Only in Nelson, only in New Zealand could this happen. That was Nelson News. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel informed. Thanks for joining us with Nelson News, presented to you by Guy Williams. Is that it? That's it. That's Nelson News <laughs> for there, this week. Is there only one story? A man who came to Nelson <laughs> wowed. Who's wowed by a man who makes a wristwatch of his own penis for a start? I don't know. And then he's coming back with a show for kids. Who thinks that's a good idea? That's a terrible idea, Nelson. It is a terrible idea. And I thought Nelson News was a bad idea, but it turns out that... <laughs> 
I may have been wrong because people are ringing up with their own stories yes. now. Joel, what's your Nelson News story? Oh, I think it's fantastic, and I've got breaking Nelson news that last Great. night I spotted Mike Peru in a restaurant out for dinner. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Uh, at a little restaurant called When in Rome, we were out for our work through last night. Fantastic wee spot, and uh, there was Mike Peru having a wee feed. Was he was he by himself, Joel? Uh, no, he he had some friends around him, I believe. Was he doing the classic Mike Peru when he like looks around hoping that people will recognise him? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so, but we, we scratched our head over it for a wee while, but no, that was my Nelson breaking news. That oh, was wow. very good breaking news, Joel. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, Joel. you very much. It was, all, it was better than guys, let's say. Oh. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. We are going to take more people's small town Nelson news stories because we have got the phones lighting up with them right now, so if you want to hear what's going on in small towns around New Zealand, stick around. Here we go. It's the Sharon and Guy fill-in podcast. And I can't believe it. We've had so many stories come through after Guy did Nelson News. Nelson News. It is a segment that, how would you describe it? News from Nelson or other places similar to Nelson that have got some issues going down. Ashley is called up and she wants to contribute to Nelson News. Ashley, what's your news? Well, in Wellington, we yep. ha- in Coburnie, we have this little chicken. Yeah. And he's, he's brain dead, I swear. <laughs> what does he because do? Because he freaking... Walks in front of the road, and he just walks in front of cars. He's got no fear, suicidal. <laughs> he goes into my friend's house because they just live around here. Yeah, and he goes and goes into the kitchen. Yeah, and he poops on the floor, <laughs> and he leaves. So what you're saying is actually, why did the chicken cross the road to poo on your friend's floor? <laughs> That, Pretty that, much. That was genuinely quite funny. You didn't need to do a sarcastic laugh at there. That was a good oh, gag. I didn't think it was. I thought it was a dad joke. Well, yes, Ashley, thank you for contributing to Nelson News. Thank you. These are the important stories that New Zealand needs to hear. Yes, they definitely needed to hear about the chicken that I love on how she got floor. a chicken brain dead. Like, who's ever met a smart chicken? Like, old chickens are like borderline brain dead, aren't they? There was that chicken that could pick the scores and lot of numbers. Yeah, there I don't think that chicken knew what chicken. he was doing. <laughs> Time for more Nelson news. We've got on the phone Dan. Hi, it's, um, here in Napier we had um, a guy who asked for a top up on his mortgage um, of seven k, but they accidentally gave him his whole mortgage back, which is like a hundred thousand, wow. and he went and brought Holdens with it. <laughs> Nothing but Holdens. <laughs> God. That was Napier News. Thank you so much, Dan, for calling in. We bloody appreciate yes. it, mate. Wow, imagine that, just waking up and your mortgage was paid in your bank account. I love that. What a white trash cracker thing to do. i got got hundred grand. What should I do? Just buy hits of Holdens, bro. It'll be awesome. It is amazing. Take we- it down the park, do some burnouts. Well, that is Nelson News for this week. We will do it again next Thursday <laughs> against my own will. Okay, Sharon and Guy filling in. Hey, Sharon, what's coming up? We witnessed something amazing on the vote last night. Guy Williams was there talking oh. about whether or not teams have it harder these days or not. I don't know if I want to talk about it anymore. It was quite awkward last night. <laughs> you were quite offensive. <laughs> you were quite offensive in places. We do have a little clip. Not intentionally, not intentionally. Well, uh, there were a few people that were a bit angry with you. Do we have a clip that we can play, Chang, of Guy on the vote last night? Uh, he's not asking. As a social media expert... That used to be called unemployed. <laughs> Basically the same thing. I'm a, I'm a, I, I, I'm a comedian. Um, my dad doesn't even, not only did he not have the option of being a comedian, he doesn't even know what a comedian is. Right. Well, he still hasn't met The other one. day, my dad was... T- <laughs> anyway, that was a very, a very uh, good uh, burn you, you for can. someone who's just had their show cancelled. Uh. <laughs> He did uh, ruffle a few feathers last night. That was just burning the hosts. But, well, he um, was being so mean to me and questioning my career. So I was like, hey, you're getting your show cancelled. Screw you, bro. Shame. Sharon and Guy. So again. Last night on TV3, Guy was a part of the panel on The Vote. And you did ruffle a few feathers. I was out of my depth, Sharon. Basically, normally I just go on, like, laugh a minute, have a yuck, yuck uh, comedy shows like John on Ben or Seven Days. We just kind of go on there. And if you screw up, it's all fun. This was a proper debate show. I was against Jacinda Ardern. She's a politician. Yes. And she ripped the shreds out of me. But first we'll start with, like, where I started, which was I had I had quite a promising beginning. 
Because he said that um, a wholesome, admirable existence was difficult to achieve now as a, as, a, as a teenager. Would you agree with that? Not at all. I am living proof, I think. I'm 26 years old and I have had an easy life. I, um, I was at school uh, under uh, Tim O'Connor and um, <laughs> not at all. He used to tell me that um, uh, nothing of any value comes without hard work and I've uh, worked my whole career to prove him wrong. <laughs> and Great start. I was getting some laughs. I was making some good points. The moot was, is it easier today to be a teen, right? Yep. They tried to next bamboozle me with pornography. Well, it's interesting because Playboy, and I'm going to bring you in here, Guy, I don't know why. Why are you pitting? Why I'm, are you? You're tarnishing my good I, reputation. I, I, I wore a tie. Yeah. I wore a tie to this. I, I, so it was going all right. The debate was hot and heavy. That was, again, see, I just have weird turns of phrases. When you put me in these situations, I say weird things. And it was, I almost survived the show until the very last argument when it all went a bit pear-shaped. So in today's society, we're healthier, we're smarter, yep. we're, um, we're a lot more knowledgeable and yep. a lot more um, tolerant of other That's people. Right. Jacinda's already alluded to the fact that... Um, uh, Sexual, uh, sorry, women are um, uh, probably getting it better than they ever have before. Yep. Um, getting it better? <laughs> I don't believe I. <laughs> I don't believe I made a judgment call on that. Getting it more often. I'm amazed you only stopped him there. I would have stopped him at sexual. Um, no, 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 no. Racial, racial, and sexual minorities uh, have. Oh, keep uh, digging. Yeah. <laughs> Have right. probably have probably got it. It's probably more tolerant than it ever was before. Why are you being so sarcastic? I can't believe you said that. Have I, you ever been a woman in a workplace before? I have, to be honest, Sharon. I cocked up, and I would just like to take. Yeah, this, you did. I would like to take this chance to apologise. I. It all came out all wrong, as you can imagine. I wore a tie. I was there. I was all sweaty and nervous. And you, I wanted to say that things have been improving for women. Just from a like a, a, a financial standpoint and from a, um, a, a, a political standpoint, they're more represented in the House of Representatives. And I ended up saying, women are getting it better than they've ever gotten it before. It was so awkward. So I'd like to apologise now to anyone who was offended by my mistakes the, last night. The question was, is it harder to be a, teen, <laughs> a teenager nowadays? And we want to know what you think about this. How did I get so far off track? I don't know. I have no idea. Text us to 334. <laughs> Three. Sharon and Guy. Filling in for JJ, Mike and Dom. Um, anyway, talking about something not creepy is, is it harder to be a teenager these days? This was the big debate last night on The Vote. You may have seen Guy on it and he was looking way worse than he is this morning because he still had his moustache. I... <laughs> Thank you for taking that off my face today. That's okay. I was on the team that said, yes, teenagers have never had it better, and we got destroyed. Jacinda Ardern and Rose Matafeo ripped us to absolute shreds. Why do you think that it's easier for teenagers? I think that um, now the general society is richer. There's more opportunities to go to university. I think uh, technology means you can just Google and copy and paste all your essays for school off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so many reasons why it's so much better. Texting people are coming in. Someone said that hair care is a lot easier these days. I but think it's way harder to be a teenager these days. <laughs> Why? Because there's so much more that you have to keep up with. Like at school, you don't have to have your school books and stuff anymore. You have to have like your iPad and all that sort of stuff. So there's all it's that. more expensive and stuff, way, eh? It's way more expensive to live. There's way more gadgets that your family has to somehow pay for. There's so much more social pressure than there was. It's harder to buy a house as well. Yes. And, and that. Like how are you supposed to save up for but that the, if but, no one gives you a shot? But at the same time, think about if you're like a, a minority or something like that or, um, or you're of a of a race that's often like um, made uh, prejudice against, mm -hmm. um, you will be a lot more supported now. I mean, things still aren't perfect for minorities, but things are improving. And I like to think society is getting better every year, and that's why I think it's easier. Well, we want to know what you think as well. So call us 0800 The Edge or text us at 3343. Tatiana, you're 19. What do you think? I think it's a lot harder for teenagers nowadays because um, no one will give us the shot to get our first job because we don't have enough work experience, but how are they going to get experience if no one's going to give us that first job? Good point. That is a great point, Tatiana. Can I say this, though? Why don't you just... Is, 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 are you trying to find a job at the moment? Um, no, I ended up having to move out of town 
away from my family to find a job. Oh, well, good, hey, good commitment. Sometimes you've got to do whatever it takes, and that's a very good effort. That is great commitment. Thanks for your call this morning, Tatiana. And Jess, what do you think? I reckon, Guy, if that's right, you should jump on the show. Are you smarter than a 10-year-old? And <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Now, Jess, how old are you? you Very a, good point, Jess. Are you a teenager now? I'm 21. Now? And why do you think that teenagers have it harder now? Well, you think about it. 30 years ago, all the stuff that you're learning then is what 10-year-olds are learning today. You know so much more stuff and you have to know it more. Our brains are so knowledgeable, they're about to explode with information. <laughs> <laughs> That's my theory. Thank you, Jess. Thanks, Angelo, Jess. what do you think? Angelo? Oh, Angelo was going to say that schooling is way easier these yeah. days, that NCEA is way easier than it was when you did school C, which I, I think that is true. You don't have to remember everything from the whole year for one exam. Yeah. <laughs> that was really, really hard. Peter, what's your opinion? Oh, I reckon teens these days are just big crybabies. Yeah. I have no idea how hard it was back then. Yeah. What, what's yeah they get everything handed to them and they still have a cry about it. Absolutely. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't think they get everything handed to them. They have to work a lot harder. Oh, definitely. Well, well <clears throat> they've got to get laptops and whatnot, or they think they need to get a laptop. Yeah, it's all a social pressure, but it all goes down to the parents who have to pay for the stuff. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Well, thanks for your call this morning, Peter. We've had a whole lot of texts that have come through as one, well. One big thing, and this is what I'm talking about the text machine as well, one big thing we debated last night was uh, cyberbullying, and I always thought, like, cyberbullying... Back in the day, they had real bullying. Like, they still have real bullying. It's not. It's like more on the internet now. And my my theory was that things like Ask FM and stuff are horrific. The main question on Ask FM is, I think, do you want to be bullied or not? I just don't, I say don't go on Ask FM. If I was a teen today, I would never go on that site because you get ripped to shreds. I, I don't believe that that's correct. There there is. Ju- I think there's more bullying now because you're getting bullied in real life, getting bullied on your phone, then you're getting bullied on online as well. But you so can turn worse. you can turn your phone off. You can switch it off. You don't have to read the, the feedback. Yeah, but sometimes you can't. What if you want to text your friend? <laughs> you can't just not if you're getting, you well, know. if you want to check Facebook.com. It's like when people send us mean texts to the studio. You know that you shouldn't read them and they shouldn't get to you, but yep. they still do. No, fair point. That fair is, point. And it cuts me deep inside my heart. You can send us your opinion at 3343 or you can call us 0800 The Edge. But I think what we did find out this morning is it's probably 50-50. Yeah, it's a split. Da- it's a very so interesting far. one. So yeah. far. Keep the text coming in. I'm loving talking about this. Let's do this. Sharon and Guy. Filling in. We have got a feature that we, well, kind of just decided to call before. <laughs> Chang's <laughs> cool story, bro. I wouldn't even call it a cool story, bro. It's just a story from Chang that doesn't even really make sense. Can, oh. we, can we make a theme song about this just to make it better? All right. Okay. Uh... You go. His name was Chang, Chang. and he had a story. story. He told it to us, us. and it was kind of boring. boring. It's Chang's story, yeah. Chang's story, yeah. Hey, You're quite hey. good. That's pretty yeah. good. That was my sheer impression. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 just need, we just need some um, auto tune and stuff then. Some music. <laughs> oh, well, Popcorn in the kettle black, mate. <laughs> You're in no position to judge, yeah. bro. What's going down? Oh, this is a very interesting story. It's 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 a story from China, from my my home country. Yeah. yeah. So this uh, a couple, a married couple yeah. who's been married for a very long time, and they went to a motor show together to see some new flesh cars. Yeah. Mo- oh, like a like a car, a car shop. shop. Yeah. Yeah, car show. Show. Yeah. So, so, and the, 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 they are from a really rich background, but the guy's very tight. Most Asian people are very tight. They don't like spending their money. So, what the, the woman wanted to buy this brand new car. Yeah. And the husband's like, no, I'm not going to buy it. Why do we need one? We have one at home already. <laughs> so, what she did is the first thing she did, she scratched the hood of the car with a key. <gasps> oh, she keyed the car. She keyed the car so that he has to go and pay for it. Well, mm-hmm. he's like, no, no, I'm not going to. And then, secondly, so he didn't do that. Secondly, he went attacking, she went attacking him. You go buy me a car! <laughs> you buy now! You buy me that car now! <laughs> and how long did the tantrum go on for? It went on for ages. <laughs> and did he eventually give in and, and buy the car? No, unfortunately. No. What? So, yeah. Imagine that. A, a grown Asian woman. Yeah. <laughs> in front of all these Asian people. <laughs> buy me that car! He I'm was a it. man and his name Let's was Chang. Chang. He had a story, story. and it was kind of boring. boring. It's a Chang story, bro. It's a Chang story, bro. Thank you so much for that story, Chang. We, uh, we uh, Wish always it appreciate it. didn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we got we to bury that, that segment now. <laughs> yeah, wow. Um, well... 
It's going to be a regular thing. Chang's story, bro. Keep the information coming, mate. If you'd like to win a One Direction CD called yes. Midnight Memories, call now 0800 The Edge. I'm purely doing that because I don't want you to tune out after that story. <laughs> hey! <laughs> We've got new music coming up from MKTO. If you haven't heard their new song yet, I suggest you stick around because I reckon it's going to be your new fave. Listen out for it next on The Edge. The Edge. Here we go. It's the Sharon and Guy Fill-In Podcast.